Mr. Mr. President, what about Michael Cohen? Are, are, are you considering right, a Thank you very Michael much. Stupid question. Stupid question. That's President Trump downplaying the questions today about he, whether he'd pardon Michael Cohen. Our reporting tonight, though, adds some intrigue. Cohen encouraged by Trump's tweets as a sign to stay strong. That's courtesy of Vanity Fair. And even if no pardon's being discussed formally, he thinks these are messages that Trump is still watching out for him. But why should Trump be worried at all? That brings us to a special report tonight. How some people in Trump land could have wider criminal liability than they realize and a major tool in Mueller's pocket. The law that I'm talking about is something everyone knows, at least in general, bribery. But here's what's key. While traditionally government bribery sounds like something only government officials can do, something that's only an issue after someone takes office, like Trump in January, there are now indications that Mueller could get tougher and reach back farther than that. Take former federal prosecutor Seth Waxman, who argues there's a way that federal bribery laws actually can apply the moment a candidate becomes the party's nominee. Seth is my special guest tonight to dig into what he calls an arrow in Mueller's quiver. Now, bribery does not always go down like it does in the movies. It's not always a suitcase full of cash. In fact, when you're buying off a public official, the law says a bribe can be anything of value. And bribery is a weapon federal prosecutors can use. In fact, during his time running the FBI, Bob Mueller ramped up the number of public corruption cases they investigated. And he knows, as well as anyone, that Trump became a public official under the law, not when he won and was sworn in, but rather six months earlier, the day he stood on that stage in Cleveland and accepted the Republican nomination for president. Nobody knows the system better than me. I have seen firsthand how the system is rigged. The time gap between the nomination and the oath is important. Consider that the DNC emails came out during that time, that Donald Trump Jr. was in touch with WikiLeaks then, that Roger Stone first claimed he was talking to Guccifer 2.0 then. And this law is designed to deal with exactly potentially that kind of preemptive action if it becomes a bribe, which is why it says, quote, any person who's been nominated or appointed to be a public official can be prosecuted under that 1962 bribery law. Seth Waxman is here as well as Nick Ackerman. Uh, Seth, why is this important? Well, Ari, I think this could be a game changer when it comes to federal prosecutions. I mean, the federal bribery charge has a 15-year criminal penalty, a jail term associated with it. Federal prosecutors use that kind of tool to go after senior members of a conspiracy and try to roll them up onto the leadership of that conspiracy. And I think the reason we haven't been discussing this law up until now is because you have to kind of dig into the federal bribery statute. In fact, look at the definition section. Not to get too legally geeky here. Let's do but, it. And you real <laughs> well, let's do it. And, and when you look at that, you realize, as you pointed out, that the law does not uh, just begin to apply when the public official is sworn into office, as Mr. Trump was in January of 2017, but rather backs all the way up to July of 2016 when he was nominated. So if someone, yep. if someone, say a foreign agent, uh, wants to bribe someone for what they would do if or after elected, you're saying that bribe, quote unquote, can take place during the campaign. Right, and that's why the law was structured the way it was back in 1962. This Congress realized that public officials aren't susceptible to bribes just once they get into office. If someone's kind of in the pipeline to take a serious office, no serious office, then uh, no more serious office than the president of the United States, we want to protect against that kind of corruption. And so they made the law apply as of the date of the nomination, which in this case puts it directly into the heart of where Bob Mueller and his team are looking at with all these various interactions between the Russian team on the one side and the Trump team on the other. Uh, Nick, what do you think of Seth's eagle eyes here? I think he's absolutely correct. I think what the quid pro quo is here is the dropping of sanctions um, in return for the Russians helping on the campaign. What the Russians wanted worse than anything was to get from under the sanctions that were imposed by Obama with respect um, to the invasion of the Ukraine uh, and also to the sanctions that were levered later with respect to the um, in interference in the election. So if the Russians get the sanctions, under your theory, uh, what did the Trump campaign get? They, the get, the, they get the help. 
They get the help in getting elected. They get the emails that are stolen from the DNC. Uh, they get the Russians uh, suppressing the Hillary Clinton vote by using um, Facebook and using Twitter and going after the Hillary Clinton voters and suppressing that vote. So, Seth, is that a theory that you think has foundation and precedent? I think that that fits squarely in what, what a bribery case is typically all about, a quid pro quo. So it's the offering of dirt on Hillary Clinton in exchange for a promise to reduce sanctions. So anything that's that this for that kind of an exchange when it involves a public official is a classic bribery charge. And, and what's different about this charge than all the other charges that we've been talking about, whether it's federal election campaign law or Foreign Agent Registration Act, I will tell you as a former federal prosecutor, those are very rare prosecutions. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, a federal bribery charge kind of goes to the heart of what every federal prosecutor who's gone after public corruption uses as their primary weapon. And I can tell you, Bob Mueller and his team are very adept and very comfortable using that kind of charge and bringing a case under that law. Right. And it was fascinating to read your analysis of this as a federal prosecutor yourself. I mean, you're not freelancing uh, as, a, as a fantasy movie plot. You're talking about what you think uh, there is a case for. And I know you've brought them in the past. Seth Waxman and Nick Ackerman, thank you both. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.